Hi, this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. The greenhouse growing tropical plants, house plants, begonias, streptocarpus, cyclamen, orchids, loads of other things in that, in a totally unsuitable climate in the north of England, just in case you needed a reminder. We're jumping on a considerable but unfathomable interest in the morning routines bandwagon. But today I'm going to take you through my daily maintenance routine for looking after all the plants in my 10 by 14 foot greenhouse that you can see in the back there while maintaining my full-time job, my YouTube channel, and my sanity, although the last one is debatable. Let's jump in. And we are in. So a greenhouse is a totally unsuitable environment for plants in many ways. So I've got to make sure that on a daily basis I come in here and give them what they need. So this is the first time I've consciously separated these tasks out into individual components and in many ways it seems a very arduous and long and laborious process. But I can assure you it takes me just a few minutes every day to ensure that this repeatable set of steps is something that takes me a minimum amount of time. No more than 10 10 to 20 minutes on a daily basis, sometimes even less than that. So let's get on with it. Okay, so the first thing I check when I come into the greenhouse are the temperatures. I have a quick glance around at all the monitors I have that are telling me what the temperatures are in both sides of my greenhouse, the warmer side and the intermediate side. And to help me do that, I have a few little gadgets. This one is a sensor, a Technoline sensor. There are probably other things that do the same job and what it does is it tends, sends to my phone, I have an app on my phone and it sends me the temperatures when they reach a certain preset amount. So I might have it set at 12 degrees over in the cooler side. So if the temperature drops below 12 degrees, which of course it shouldn't because I have a control system in place, but I need to know if it does, if something goes wrong with that, uh, it will send me an alert and tell me that that's, that's what's happened. If it goes above a certain amount, now I have it set to about 28 degrees Celsius. If it goes above that, then my plants are in danger of frying, which of course I don't want to happen. So I also get an alert when that particular circumstance happens. When the temperatures are too high, then what I do is I open all the louvre windows and the front doors. I also need to check that the temperatures outside aren't in danger of going below my preset temperatures because if that happens then of course the heaters will kick in and I will pay an awful lot, even more than I'm paying already for heating. So temperatures are really important especially in a greenhouse or if you have a conservatory or a grow room they're also susceptible to high fluctuations in temperatures. Obviously something with a lot of glass is going to be in that particular bracket. So the first thing I check of course is the temperatures to make sure everything is as it should be. The next thing I glance at are all the fans. I have three fans in here and I need to ensure that they're all working properly. Fans don't tend to last that long in a greenhouse, mainly because it's so humid over here and of course they're running for an awful long time. I have them running both day and night and I just give them the odd little 10-15 minute break just to stop them overheating. I don't know if that works, if that makes any difference, but that's what I do anyway. I just keep them cycling on and off. It's really important to have ventilation and to have air movement in a greenhouse greenhouse for all sorts of reasons. Of course it replicates what goes on in the wild but it also keeps the pathogens down to some degree. Viruses and bacteria really thrive in still humid atmospheres which is what we would have naturally in the greenhouse if I don't have the air moving about. Another benefit to having air movement is that plants get soft sappy growth unless they're exposed to that extra input of air movement. You can imagine a sapling growing in the ground outside if it was totally staked up to the top of the trunk then that isn't really what's recommended because that won't make the trunk any stronger. You can imagine Imagine that air movement allowing it to flex in the wind will actually build up the trunk in order to make it stronger. So it's like any of us, if you cost it something too much, then it doesn't really grow as strong and as tough as you want it to. So having that extra air movement and ventilation really, really helps. It helps all the plants. It's just what they're used to, it's what they like, and it makes them grow as strong as they possibly can do. The third job is a very quick one. I have a sweep around. A quick look around at all those plants that I know might wilt if they're not watered properly. Now, if you've watched some of my other recent videos, you'll know that I've recently employed the use of capillary matting, which has definitely helped, but it's not solved every issue. There are still plants 
like streptocarpus are prone to it, cyclamen are prone to it, one or two begonias are prone to wilting if they just go over a little bit of dryness for a little bit longer than they want to. So for example, the begonia luxurians, which is back here in the intermediate side, if I leave it just a day longer or just a few hours longer even than it wants to remain dry, then it will of course wilt over and it will really wilt a long way. It'll just completely flop and sag. Now I'm fortunate in that it, it does recover very quickly and I've just noticed this begonia luxuriance is gonna get some blooms and I believe that they might not look that good when they do come out, but they are quite fragrant so I'm looking forward to that that's a little surprise in the middle of making a video and that's what you get with plants so just quick sweep round and you can see there's another begonia there the griffon that also will wilt if it's left too dry for too long so that is something that I can do at a very quick glance and it also helps me to keep in touch with all my plants and look at all my plants but I can do that very very quickly it only takes a couple of minutes the fourth daily job is to look after the carnivorous plant because some plants like these ones over here, these cephalotus, they really like to stay wet at the bottom for a couple of days and then I like to let them dry out for a day. So I've got to keep my eye on that and if I leave them too long then they're going to suffer for it. Other carnivorous plants that really need keeping an eye on every day are the nepenthes. If these nepenthes dry out then they really will suffer and they will drop all the pictures as I know to my cost because that's what happened to this Nepenthes burkii. So I'll have a quick whiz round. I've got to use RO water for these but I'll make sure that I water all my carnivorous plants. I've got some little ones as well, some little Nepenthes, probably about 10 to 12 of those dotted about. I'm using capillary matting for some of them, that certainly helped quite a bit but these that are hanging on their own I need to make sure that they do not dry out so that is a daily job as well. The fifth job is to keep an eye out for pests and diseases and again I'm going to need to look a little bit more closely for this like for example on this Tredescantia down here you can see that there is a little nick come out of one of the leaves. Now that is clearly damage from a pest so somewhere in the greenhouse something is doing that. It doesn't actually look like slug damage to me, it looks more like beetle damage which makes me think of the dreaded vine weevil which some of you might know I had problems with earlier in the year with that. So I've got to really keep an eye out for that. Once a week, and of course I'm talking here at the moment about my daily jobs, my daily maintenance routine, but once or maybe twice a week I'll spend a little bit longer when I'm watering and I will pick plants up because that tends to be the best way to spot the pests and diseases. Spider mite I tend to have a problem with, I can't really see them that much, I just tend to see the damage that they've caused. Uh, some of you might have spotted one of my or a couple of my Thunbergia videos over the last 18 months that I've been making these videos and since I put it outside it's absolutely thriving and the only reason it didn't thrive in here well perhaps two reasons one is lack of light but the other one is that it is a martyr to spider mite same with the Brugmansia outside as well those problems seem to disappear with spider mite when you get them outside but in a greenhouse they absolutely thrive so pests and diseases are something you've really got to keep an eye on I have a Terris Cretica. I'll see if we can just whiz around to show what it looks like at the moment. My Terris Cretica, sorry for the camera movement, here it is down here, looking really good here but it did get some scale at some point and I, it, it completely cut it down to the bottom because it was just terrible and no amount of spraying, it was so infested, no amount of spraying would recover it or rescue it. But I chopped it right back to the bottom and it came back a good, good few months later but it did, it did come back and it's enjoying being on the capillary matting at the moment and being nice and damp. This little bit of damage here is because it's in direct line of the farm so that's what's causing that. So yeah, pests and diseases, you've got to keep an eye out for these things especially when you've got so many plants all closely packed together. Loads of places for them to hide, loads of opportunities for them to spread from leaf to leaf. I also had a problem with cyclamen mite which do attack other plants, especially Streptocarpus. I seem to have eradicated them again, but no doubt at some point, because they're only microscopic, they will come back. So that is definitely part of my daily maintenance routine. 
My sixth job is to top up any of these reservoirs that I have that feed all the other trays with capillary matting. Now, sometimes I'll leave them dry for a little bit because I don't want the plants that are fed by them to get overly wet. But I have about four or five trays dotted about the greenhouse and I've got to check that they have a little bit of water in them or that they're ready to have some water or maybe ready to leave dry for a little bit. So again, that's something I can do with a glance or a very quick top up with some water from a watering can. Number seven is all the mounts and the moss here as well that you can see. And these should get watered on a daily basis because obviously they're very exposed in the roots. However, I don't. It's not something that I find myself inclined to do. I sometimes spray them with some water out of a little sprayer that I have. And occasionally I will dunk them into the trug that I have that already has some water with orchid food prepared in there. I'll do that when I've got time and I just leave them and I'll come back later. But I do find that it's generally not a problem in here because it's so humid. It tends to be, in general, in the UK, over 75% humidity. So I think they tend to be okay. Every two or three days, I'll go and dunk them into the trug and just leave them for a few hours and come back to them later. So that is one of the things that I think I can probably do better on. I could probably give them more of a daily watering but I just can't bring myself to do it this is why I'm not really getting any more mounts I don't think because the, for some reason I just find them a little bit too much in the way of labor intensive and while we're talking about mounts here I've only just cut off the spikes of this little mini fal here and we have two more so I'm glad I came over here to spot this thing just constantly produces Bloom. So that is the Phalaenopsis Long Pride Gold Staff. It's a very popular one, but I must say it is a gorgeous, gorgeous one. But of course, I might lose that this year because I'm not going to be keeping my temperatures warm enough. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, we're nearly there. So the eighth thing I do on a regular basis, on a daily basis, in fact, is deadheading. Streps are the number one thing that need deadheading. You can see already there's one or two. Uh, blooms that are going over. There's always some more coming and I do have to cut off the spikes once the spikes are finished blooming, cut those right back to the bottom there. Cyclamen are the same when it's cyclamen season. I find that Pelagoniums are rather labour intensive as well. Once the blooms are over, they need cutting off and you've got to make sure that all these yellowing leaves are pulled off as well because they will get fungal diseases in particular botrytis and it will spread i've noticed i have one over here that's quite a furry pelagonium quite a furry leaf and this is really prone to it in this greenhouse see i'm already doing it while i'm talking to you here as soon as they get that fungus on the end there it's well worth pulling them off as quickly as you can same with the blooms because obviously you don't want that to spread and it will spread really quickly so any kind of deadheading cutting leaves off that kind of thing that goes on as i'm doing my glance round as i'm wandering around i'm even doing it while I'm making videos. It's just the kind of thing us plant growers do. We just pick constantly. Same as when you're in the garden. Very difficult to sit there and enjoy it all. You tend to be up on your feet and pulling a weed up here or there or pruning a little bit back. Number nine on my list is to keep an eye out on the orchids for what's going on. So I'm looking for things like new spikes. I'm looking for things like this over here that seems to be going downhill. All the growth seems to be dying off. Or maybe there's some new growth on it. Or maybe it looks like it's getting some kind of disease like this Dendrobium berryoda over here. Although the new growth looks all right on that. It's just the older leaves dying off perhaps. Things like that, things to do with orchids. Very often, for me anyway, the action to take with an orchid is do absolutely nothing. I tend to kill them with love, I think. Um, very often, it's a root problem, especially during the winter months, and the action for me to take is to not water it. I really have to stay my hand when it comes to orchids because they do much better when they're left alone. They 
produce spikes when they're left alone and forgotten about. They produce new growth when they're left alone and forgotten about. The more I maul with them, the worse they seem to get. So I find that the action is no action whatsoever. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that. If you can, put it in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this so far. It all helps the channel to grow and I love to hear about you. So please put in the comments down below any of your experiences with your daily routine. One more to go. So the final job on my list of daily jobs for my daily routine is to look out for repots. So I've recently repotted this begonia listada here, this begonia silver lace down here. This will probably need a repot soon because you can see it's getting rather big for the pot. So it's just a case of keeping an eye out, seeing what needs repotting. Very often orchids for me need putting in smaller pots, not larger ones because of the problem with the humidity and the root growth and so on. But I do find that just by keeping a glance, keeping an eye out, keep looking what's going on, you see which things need doing as you work your way around. Now, looking back at the list that I've just described, it seems rather a long and complicated thing to do that anybody would want to do on a daily basis. But honestly, it really doesn't take that long. It's just a case of five, 10 minutes every day and I manage to keep on top of it somehow. It somehow all works out. Sometimes I miss things, you know, plants don't change very quickly. They tend to give you some warning that something's going to happen. So I find that even if I do miss something sooner or later, it will pop onto my radar and I will get it done in good time. I haven't really included the more lengthy tasks that I would do on a weekly basis. Very often I will leave things to the end of autumn and winter when I've got more time to do it. I'll do things then, even if it's not necessarily the best time to do it. I think in general that you find that yes, there are best times, there are optimal times to do things, but you do them when you've got time to do them. And you know, in my experience, plants, they want to survive they very often will cope with doing things at the wrong time of year. So it's not something that I would worry about too much. So what I would like you to do now is tell me in the comments, what is your daily routine? Have I actually mentioned something that you don't do and you might start to do? And vice versa, have I not mentioned something that you do that perhaps I would like to add into my routine? I may well have just forgotten something because you do these things on a daily basis and you don't think about it. You just get on with it and do it, especially when nobody's actually holding you to account for it, which in my case, nobody is. It's just a hobby. So I'd like to put in the comments below anything at all that will be of interest to our community because as growers, we love to spread the knowledge around, don't we? And spread the experiences around it all helps and really gives some enjoyment some extra like an extra added dimension to growing plants because it is quite a lonely process otherwise isn't it because there's only you there i would also think that as we're coming up to autumn in the uk here it's time for me anyway to bring my cyclum and persicum back into growth and you can see one or two have started to pop up there so if you are in the position of bringing your cyclum out of dormancy then i think a good idea would be to go and watch this video that i put on the screen now and i might even do an update on that soon too and for now i'll see you on the next one bye